Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Now, do you know why cloud security implementations fail? In my 20 plus years of experience in cybersecurity, the last six I have spent dedicated into cloud security, you know, uh, understanding, implementing cloud security. And you, there are a lot of things I've seen why people, they want to implement cloud security within the company. They invest millions and millions of dollars, but later on, they find out that they made certain mistakes and that leads to a lot of frustrations, a lot of U-turns and a lot of wasted time and effort. So in this video, I'm going to show you some of the most common reasons why I have seen cloud security implementations fail. And these reasons are common. You can be like a small startup or you can be like a massive Fortune 500 company with like billions and billions of dollars in security budget. But these problems remain the same. So stick around and I'm going to show you in this video. If you're new to the channel, my name is Tamurish Lal. I am a senior security consultant with Amazon Web Services. And I made this channel to talk about things like cloud security, AI, and, you know, just help people in their cybersecurity career. So uh, let's get started. So why does cloud security fail? You know, what are some of the common reasons that I have seen personally uh, for uh, like failed cloud security implementations? So let's go to, we're going to go step by step and I'm going to show you what are the things I'm talking about. Because you know what happens is people get very excited when they're migrating to the cloud. They have this like uh, imperative to migrate, you know, a thousand servers to AWS or Azure or Google and they get a lot of money as a budget and they implement, but they do not see the benefits they were expecting or it leads to a lot of problems a lot of you know fighting between the cybersecurity team and the IT team and the cloud team and it becomes a like it becomes very problematic so in this video let's see what am I talking about why are the reasons why a lot of cloud security implementations fail and not just failing I mean that is dangerous by itself it can also lead to potential security breaches because these things are not outlined and that can lead to a lot of problems down the road where you can have actual security breaches happening so the first reason I have seen, and this is very, very common, where cloud security is treated like a project and not a program. Uh, what do I mean by this? So a project is something one time. You know, you implement it, uh, you like uh, it, it has a start and a finish. And once it's finished, people forget about it. Or they say, yeah, okay, when, what did we learn? A program is something which is continuous. If you treat cloud security like an implementation or an initiative or a project and forget about it, that is easily one of the biggest mistakes you can make. A, a cloud security should not be like this, where you have like this roadmap, like a project, right? And it looks like this, a start and a finish. But when you say finish, what does that mean? Like after that, who's looking after this? Have you formalized who is going to be doing what? Have you implemented like a continuous improvement model? Are you actually thinking about cloud security every year or it is something you've moved a system to the cloud and now you've forgotten about it for the foreseeable future? This can lead to a lot of problems down the road, a lot of finger pointing if a security breach happens. So please do not treat your cloud security like a project. It has to be a proper program. And the reasons why, why you cannot treat cloud security like a project because cloud environments are dynamic you may have implemented something in the cloud last year and maybe you implemented a lot of security controls you hardened it but cloud environments keep changing im roles might change security configurations might change you know uh, you might have troubleshooted something and you may have given more permissions and now you don't know because you're not looking at it you're not looking at the cloud as a dynamic environment and you might think that the provider, this is the provider's responsibility, Microsoft or Azure or Google, they will do it. It's not my responsibility. That can be a very, very dangerous assumption to make. So you cannot treat the cloud like a project, treat it like a program, treat it something which is, you know, a separate environment from on-prem. It is not something you do on the site and then you forget about it for like six months or until the, maybe the next audit happens. That is a very, very dangerous mistake to make. And the reason too, and which comes from the same issue, it is not formalizing the responsibility. Who is going to be doing what in the cloud? You will not believe how many people I know. They think that, oh, everything is the provider is going to be doing, you know, AWS, Azure, Google, they will be doing all the security. I don't have to worry about anything. And they have no idea that no, the cloud does not work like this. Or they think the IT team might be thinking this is something the cybersecurity team will be doing. And the cybersecurity team is thinking oh, the patching will be all done by IT. And this can, again, you know what happens, right? Later on, if there is a security breach, all the blame game starts happening. Everybody is finger pointing at the other person. This is his fault. This is his fault. But all of it comes from the same issue that you treated cloud security like a project and you did not 
formalize the responsibility which should have been there. You should have a proper org chart where you have a CISO, you have cloud security, DevSecOps, monitoring happening. All of these responsibilities are formalized and documented and handed over. So you have an ongoing uh, security assurances happening, ongoing security improvements happening. So this is the second most thing you want to keep in mind. And reason number three, which is again, easily the most common I see, over focus on tooling. Now, I love cloud security solutions, you know, I mean, um, I love playing around with this cloud security solution, especially when you're moving to the cloud, you get a lot of budget. So you want to implement, I don't know, the cloud ac security access brokers, uh, security posture management solutions, you know, uh, cloud workload protection, all of those things. These are amazing. Uh, I, when you start going to the cloud and you see the new types of solutions that you have, everybody gets very, very excited. But what happens is they tend to over focus on tooling and under focus on the other areas which are there, which I'll talk about. So you get all these fancy dashboards, you know, your Google Cloud Platform or AWS Security Hubs and all those things. And these are amazing, you know, uh, or you might be implementing that cloud access security book and reverse proxy, you know, you, you have these DLP solutions coming out. All of these are very, very exciting. But unfortunately, what happens is uh, some areas get missed out. That leads to a lot of confusion a lot of confusion between the cloud security teams. What areas I have seen that people do not focus on and they do not upskill themselves, uh, the shared responsibility model. That is not something technical, that is something governance related. You have to understand who is doing what in the cloud. What areas are Microsoft looking at or Google looking at or AWS looking at and what areas are my responsibility? The shared responsibility is like, a, like the name says, some obligations are the provider's responsibility, some things you have to do, but you have to know what they are. If you did not focus on these things, you will have no idea and you will move to the cloud thinking everything is the provider's responsibility or infrastructure as code. How many people do I know? They just implement tooling and they think the tooling is going to do everything and the tooling gives false positives or maybe it ignores something which serious, which is not there. Unless you understand infrastructure as code a little bit, you will always have challenges within cloud security. The entirety of cloud infrastructure, nobody does click ops. Nobody goes to the console and, you know, tries to spin up a hundred servers manually. All of it is done within code. Uh, similarly, cl cloud architecture. Uh, how do you know what sort of secure cloud architectures are there? What are the components that you have to put? This is something a solution will not help you. You have to understand the different services. You have to know how to threat model these things. And lastly, again, very, very important, the cloud cost and security trade-off. You have to understand how to read cloud bills. You have to understand like the billing within the cloud, how it works, what are the trade-offs, what are the services maybe you can shut down, what are the services you have to turn off, what are the things within cloud bills that you need to read. These are the areas, no tooling is going to help you 100% here, you have to understand, you have to upskill yourself here. So this is why do not like over focus too much on tooling and ignore these areas, otherwise you will always have challenges within cloud security. Okay. What is the answer to this? So all of these things I've highlighted to you, there's a simple solution called, it's called cloud security governance. Implementing this will help you avoid all of these problems. So what is cloud security governance? So a simple definition is, it's like a formal management model or program or framework you put into place to make sure all the cloud security processes are working and are functional. So that, this is like the textbook definition you memorize, maybe to pass a certification or something. But what am I talking about? There are certain things which cloud security governance is and it's not like a standard, it's not like the PCI DSS or GDPR, it's not an audit checklist, it's not a tool. No, there are certain areas of cloud security governance which you have to think about. You have to think about a policy framework that implementing a policy, a cloud security policy, which is not like a document you, which you write once and everybody forgets about it. It will formalize the responsibility, who is doing what. Who is responsible for patching? Who is responsible for security workload, for monitoring, for DevOps, for infrastructure scores, so that there is no confusion. And there is no like confusion later on that who is going to be doing what. You you also focus on training. It shows, it puts down a proper cloud security calendar. Well, these are the areas we're going to be focusing on for the 12 month period where uh, during and after we've implemented the cloud security project. You have, you define certain metrics. You know, what are the areas we will be monitoring on? What are the billing areas? What are the security areas? What are the operational areas? All of those things you will focus on. You will have a roadmap. Like I said, this is one aspect. This is where most people focus on. They just think about the roadmap or the project and they ignore all of these things. So roadmap is one aspect of a cloud security governance. And lastly is a risk tracker. So 
no cloud security implementation is perfect or no cloud security environment is perfect right you will have risks you will implement all these solutions and then highlighting all these risks uh, then what what happens after that you make sure they get copied into a risk tracker and where you have weekly meetings or bi weekly bi monthly meetings you know or monthly meetings but somebody needs to be looking at those risks and tracking them to closure so these are the areas you should be focusing on when it comes to cloud security governance and then you can see that you will see an actual improvement within your cloud security posture you will you will avoid all the mistakes that i talked about like i said implementing cloud security governance is very very important good news is uh, you don't don't need to start from scratch there are many many standards you have the iso standards you have standards from the open group uh, cobit all of these things just you can google it i'll try to put uh, like links uh, within the comment section also if you can take a look but uh, standards are already there you don't need to start from scratch you don't need to reinvent the wheel so take a look at these standards and then try to implement within your organization so i hope now you've understood like what are the key areas why cloud security fails and what are the areas you can do about it do not uh, what do you call treat it like a project treat it like a program formalize your responsibilities don't go overboard on tooling implement all of these things within a proper cloud security governance model and you will see a lot of benefits coming out so i hope this was useful to you do like and subscribe to this channel thank you very much and i'll see you in the next video